You could literally only drink milk and get every single vitamin and mineral your body needs. Or you could be like me and drink milk and then get insomnia for four days because you're so allergic to it. Now, this doesn't apply to conventional milk because pasteurized, homogenized milk you get in the supermarket is a different food than raw grass-fed milk from a local farm. It does not have the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. This is why dairy, on one hand, can be such a negative thing. On the other hand, such a positive thing. If you're getting raw grass-fed dairy and don't have allergies to it, it's literally one of the tastiest and most nutritious foods you could eat. On the other hand, the supermarket stuff, not so good. So, more recently, zero carb becoming very popular. A lot of people are putting cheese on stuff and cream cheese and butter. So it's not really going to be a debate on whether or not we should include it in the zero carb carnivore diet because it seems like everyone and their mother is having a cheeseburger anyway. Uh, the point is just to touch on the importance of high quality dairy and why we should be consuming it. Here I have three different butters. This is regular store-bought conventional butter. That's Kerrygold. This is raw farm butter as we could see. You know, the carotenoid content in the butter is higher as the quality goes up, indicating a higher overall fat soluble vitamin content. Same thing with the cream. The grass-fed cream on the left, raw grass-fed cream, is slightly beige yellow, and the store-bought cream is stark white. I think everyone would agree that, unlike me, that grass-fed butter tastes way better than grain-fed butter, and uh, the farm butters are a little different. They tend to be a little grassier and nuttier and taste more like a barnyard in a lot of cases. Uh, but in the case of like grass-fed cream versus regular store-bought cream, it's, it's the same as butter. Like People will prefer the grass-fed cream every single time. The, the grain-fed stuff almost tastes rancid in comparison, whereas people prefer grain-fed meat because they're cooking it, they're salting it, they're covering up that acrid grain-fed flavor with char and salt. So not only do people think grass-fed dairy will always taste better, it is definitely more nutritious for you. Now, Frank, is there a difference between, like, Kerrygold and that raw farm butter? Absolutely. There's beneficial bacteria. It's not rancid. That's the main concern about pasteurized dairy and things from the supermarket, that they are rancid. And the fats are oxidized, and they could be harmful to your health and overall histamine intolerance and things like that. And the nutrient content, of course, isn't as high. And you don't know if Kerrygold is just put, you know, Kerrygold probably isn't grass finishing their butter either. It's maybe Kerrygold is 20 to 30% better than the regular butter, but raw farm butter is 100% better. Same thing with cream, same thing with milk, same thing with cheese. You want raw grass fed. And when we look at actual dairy products, from yogurt to kefir to cheese, the important thing is that they're made in a natural way and that they have natural ingredients in them. Like in cheese, all you really want to see is raw milk, salt, enzymes, and cultures. You don't want to see, ideally animal rennet is what you want. You don't want vegetable rennet. Uh, you don't want anything else added. You want to say raw cow's milk cheese, raw sheep milk. You know, you want the milk to be raw in the cheese. For yogurt and kefir, same thing. You want the ingredients to be raw milk. And ideally, you make your own yogurt with your own starter culture, your own kefir. Instead of, because the kefir grains, and I don't really know if there's a difference between using like animal rennet and vegetable rennet for cheese and the nutrient density of the end result, I can only speculate on that. I mean, the easiest answer for that is if you do it the natural way, how it's supposed to be, of course it should be fine. But every dairy product is nutritionally complete. You know, cheese is every vitamin, every mineral, everything your body needs. Uh, the only thing is butter and cheese, uh, not butter and cheese, uh, butter and cream might not have as much protein. They still have all the vitamins and all the minerals. Uh, in regards to A1 versus A2 cow's milk, uh, that's been very popular lately because some people digest the A2 beta casein better, but that's been kind of inconclusive. Um, what we can say is goat and sheep milk is naturally A2. It's naturally homogenized. You know, it doesn't separate like cow's milk, and it's way easier to digest. Uh, the fat globules in goat milk are smaller, and then sheep milk even smaller. So Goat and sheep milk digest way better. I'm allergic to everything, guys. Don't don't ask, please. You guys have been asking me if I could drink A2 milk or if I've tried goat milk or sheep milk for like two years now. Uh, but definitely worth trying. And not only that, they are all delicious. So down here I have the nutrient content of cow versus sheep versus goat milk. Uh, the main point here is that sheep milk has twice as much fat and protein. So um, although pricing for raw milk you know, cow's milk is usually 8 to 12 a gallon. 
she milk is usually like 25 to 35 a gallon and goat milk is 13 to 15 a gallon. So generally speaking, uh, you do get what you pay if you buy she milk because it is twice as nutrient dense. It has twice as much fat and the vitamin content here is not accurate um, because, you know, for some reason they didn't measure vitamin C in cow's milk, but they measured a lot in sheep milk and less in goat milk. It's safe to say that sheep milk has more fat soluble vitamins than every other milk because it's double the nutrient content. But as what we spoke about earlier, it depends on the pasture quality. A sheep on higher quality pasture is going to have more nutrients than cow's milk will regardless. So that's what we have to keep in mind. The pasture quality correlates directly with the nutrient content of the milk. Another reason I brought this stuff up here is to just kind of speculate on the inaccuracy of the current data we have and to ask you guys if you think it would be a good idea to start doing some testing. Uh, it would probably cost, I think I've gotten quotes from laboratories, it's 1100 to 1200 to get one food tested for all of these vitamins and minerals. I mean, most of these vitamins and minerals would only cost about five to 600 but some tests, like a vitamin D test is like 300 itself. A vitamin K test is 300 itself. So it would be nice to test these foods and get some data to show people how nutrient dense milk can be. And then maybe even compare it to store ball milk and show people, hey, the cow's milk from the store is way less nutrient dense than the raw. Maybe we have to change how we're doing things. And not only that, uh, you know, they reinforce cow's milk with vitamin D sometimes, but Cows can get vitamin D in their milk if they're in the sun, so kind of contradictory. I think I kind of touched on, you know, I just want to focus that dairy is a super nutritious food. It has every vitamin A, D, E, K, all the fat soluble, water soluble B and C, all the minerals, has iodine. Many indigenous groups consumed it, especially for iodine when they did not have access to seafood. Definitely important to get high quality, definitely a, a huge variance in nutrient density between raw grass-fed dairy and pasteurized homogenized dairy, as well as taste. Uh, cows versus goat versus sheep milk. We can speculate more on that, but it's not really necessary. Uh, if you guys are looking for raw milk, check out realmilk.com or eatwild.com. Uh, it is expensive. It's not something I do. Uh, it's not something I recommend anyone do when starting a zero-carb carnivore diet. I recommend people do the diet and then introduce it as same thing with eggs. But at the end of the day, most people do have access to raw dairy easier than they do high quality beef fat, high quality plant fat. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. Same thing with egg yolks. People tend to be able to access those easier. But if you guys would like to support me, please just share the video. Uh, I do have an Amazon shop up with all the products that I usually buy. If you guys would like to check that out, the link's below. Uh, same with my Patreon. I offer discounted diet consults for uh, people that, you know, it's very, very, very cheap for me to evaluate your diet. Uh, just a brief write-up as well as one-on-one -on -one consultations. You can reach out to me, frankatufano at gmail.com. And if you guys have any questions about this video, uh, I'm sure I missed something on dairy. Uh, and if you guys would like to see any particular videos in the future, please let me know. Uh, I didn't really want to touch on, I could, I mean, I could have touched on allergies more. Uh, on like how people can have a lactose allergy versus a casein intolerance. You know, some people can tolerate cheese differently than milk, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, what you have to do, you have to remove it from your diet. And when you reintroduce it, see how you react. You might be able to digest cheese better because it has less of, you know, it has less lactose. It's casein protein. It's fermented. But you might get a histamine reaction from it. So there's pros and cons to each of these products. The only way to really tell if you should be including them in your diet is to uh, reintroduce them gradually and see how you react.